We're standing in the corner of Market Street in Caledonia, in, in Marion, Florida. Five days a week, I go for breakfast at the gazebo. I'm Willie Earl Paramore from Jackson County, Florida. I want you to think of number one through five. And one I, and through five. Tell everybody what the number was. Yeah, OK, four. Four. <laughs> Bunch of guys meet, and we have one room set aside for us. I planted the yeah, eggplant, and, and I could not and get any fruit. And all that. Okay, I, think I right. told Willie Earl about it. He said, what you need is some bees. We headed to Paramore's farm, and said. They come by every day just to aggravate people. Tupelo's what sells the best. Everybody likes Tupelo here. It's sweeter. In the high humidity, the bees are very aggressive for, for some reason. You better move back. OK. <laughs> I'll see it be there. <laughs> I'm Mary Jane Nelson. I am a district conservationist with the Natural Resources Conservation Service in Jackson County, Florida. We're on Willie Earl Paramore's 540 acres that he's been working with the agency for many years to help maintain um, a healthy forest ecosystem through the prescribed burning process. I burned this in November. Right. And these warm days that come up about this high, that's ideal food plot for deer and turkey. There's a deer track. Mr. Paramore is um, inspirational in that he is still getting out here for the benefit of the wildlife, but also for the benefit of his community and his family. That's my son and dad. Hey! Are all the bees doing all right? Oh, yeah, they do. And the legacy that he will leave, but it's difficult to keep up with Mr. Paramore. He likes to burn. You burn to increase wildlife habitat. If you burn on a regular basis, you will not have wildfires. When people find out why we burn, and they, they've seen enough news stories, they've seen enough catastrophic fires, that they understand that this is a way of ensuring that that doesn't happen to them. My name is Kevin Hires. I'm a wildland fire scientist here at Tall Timbers Research Station. Well, good afternoon, and welcome to the Red Hills Fire Festival. This is a celebration of prescribed fire, an opportunity for the public to see all the ways that, that fire is set. Tall Timbers was established as a research station in 1958. And being able to connect the application of fire to the long-term management goals of conservation in the region. All you're gonna have to do is put your wick in the fire. This is Tyler. She's a lucky winner, and she's actually gonna light fire for the first time today. The fire is now burning slowly. We, we call that backing. Occasionally get a little wind shift, and it'll flare up. If I were to tell someone something about the benefits of prescribed burns, I would tell them that um, it helps prevent larger fires from happening that aren't controlled by professionals. Fire is part of the natural forest system uh, that brings both economic return and biodiversity to the landscape. My name is Kevin McGordy. I'm director of the Tall Timbers Land Conservancy. Just as rain is and uh, water is, is and river systems are, fire is, is intrinsic. It's taken a long time from the days of Smokey and the concept of uh, all fires in the forest are bad to today, wildfires in the forest are bad. Prescribed burning is, is critical to the health and well-being of that forest system. One of the neat things about burning, and a part that is a misconception with most of the public, is they think that we're actually killing the plants when we burn them. And we're not. We're actually just killing the above ground portion. We call that top kill. Within a week or two, this will be around two to four inches high, depending on the rainfall that we get. Within a month, it'll be six to eight uh, inches tall. 
Sometimes you hear that species are fire dependent, and what that means is that without the use of regularly applied prescribed fire, they basically go away. I'm Bill Palmer. I'm the president and CEO of Tall Timbers Research Station and Land Conservancy. And the reason is because the plant community in which they live, their houses, if you will, are developed with how the plants respond to the fire. Bobwhite quail is a very important indicator species for the health of pine ecosystems. We put uh, radio colors on the birds so that we're able to track them. As you know, bobwhite have declined precipitously in the southeastern U.S. I think in 1962, there was over 3 million quail harvested in the state of Georgia and Florida. Today, less than 100,000. So we've done a lot of research on trying to understand the limiting factors. Uh, the need for frequent fire and reasonable open pine canopies to let sunlight reach the ground. Uh, without those two components, quail won't exist. We've been working with Tall Timbers for 10 or 15 years, um, doing prescribed burning and doing uh, habitat manipulations, specifically planting longleaf pine in areas that were needing more forest cover. We're helping to get the area back into a more natural condition by helping them afford this type of management. That's broom sage. The quail like to make nests in this stuff. What was your goal? To have it burn clean, have it look like a park. Please, come out. <laughs> and it keeps the, the animals coming back. It keeps animals coming back. <laughs> <laughs> and the trees grow better. My big uh, timber sale will be when I'm 98 years old, so we plan to have a big party. Uh -huh. With or without me. <laughs>